This video is part of the e-learning series Expansion of Mesenchymal Stem Cells in Stirred Single-Use Bioreactors, specifically cells derived from human adipose tissue and generally referred to as MSCs. In this section we focus on the microcarrier-based cultivation in spinner flasks. Spinner flasks operating with microcarriers allow successful expansions of MSCs at milliliter scale. However, as mentioned in video number one, it is necessary to determine beforehand the optimum microcarrier medium combination, microcarrier concentration, inoculum cell density, and impeller speed for the spinner flask type and working volume. This presupposes both screening studies with different microcarriers and media, and the sedimentation studies described in video number two. The starting point for the cultivation in spinner flasks is the cryopreserved vial with frozen cells from the working cell bank. After thawing, the whole vial content is transferred into fresh tempered medium. Centrifugation follows in order to remove the toxic freezing medium as quickly as possible. The resulting cell pellet is resuspended in fresh medium. After cell counting, the appropriate cell numbers can be inoculated into the spinner flask. By short stirring, a homogeneous cell distribution is guaranteed before the attachment period without stirring follows. Afterwards, the cells are expanded under continuous stirring for about six days. In a first step, the selected polystyrene-based microcarriers must be prepared. The required solid fraction of carriers, in our case 0.01%, is weighted on an analytical balance and prepared according to the manufacturer's advice. Afterwards, they are sterilized in the autoclave. Before transferring the sterilized microcarriers into the spinner flasks, they have to be washed one to two times with the culture medium that was specially designed by Lonsa. Therefore, the microcarriers are allowed to settle. The supernatant is carefully removed with the pipette. And the carriers are rinsed in the culture medium. Afterwards, the spinner flasks can be unpacked in the laminar flow bench. And filled with microcarriers and medium. The working volume of every spinner flask is 100 mils. Now the spinner flasks are conditioned for one hour in the incubator at 37 degrees Celsius and 7.5% CO2. For inoculation of every spinner flask, cells from the vial-based working cell bank are used. First the vials are taken out of the liquid nitrogen storage tank. One vial provides the inoculum for 8 to 10 spinner flasks. The vials are thawed in the water bath at 37 degrees Celsius for approximately 2 minutes. In the laminar flow bench, the cells are transferred into preheated medium to dilute the toxic antifreezing compound which is contained in the freezing medium. The tubes are centrifuged for 5 minutes at 1000 G and the supernatant is removed. Resuspension in fresh culture medium then takes place.
A sample is taken from the well-mixed cell suspension in order to determine the cell density and viability. The cell counting is performed by using the automated cell counting device NucleoCounter. Afterwards, inoculation volume is calculated. In our case, to achieve sufficient cell growth, it is important to have around 3 times 10 to the power of 3 cells per centimeter square carrier surface and a cell viability above 95%. The cultivation is started by transferring the calculated amount of cell suspension into the preconditioned culture medium in the spinner flask containing the microcarriers. After inoculation, the spinner flasks are transferred into the incubator and stirred for two minutes at the NS1U criterion. We had determined 49 RPM to be the impeller speed representing the NS1U criterion for our cultivations. Subsequently, the impeller is switched off for four hours to allow the cells to settle down and to attach to the microcarriers. After this process is finished, continuous agitation at the NS1U criterion is performed. Since there is no membrane to allow gas exchange in the lids of the spinner flasks, for this to happen, it is very important to open at least one lid of one arm slightly, which means two to three turns. The cell expansion process is executed at 37 degrees Celsius, 7.5% CO2 and 75% humidity over a period of approximately six days. When around two times 10 to the power of four cells per square centimeter are reached, 50% of the culture medium has to be replaced. This is usually between day three and four. Furthermore, it is recommended that offline samples for determination of cell density, concentration of glucose, lactate, glutamine and ammonia, as well as for DAPI staining are taken daily. For the sampling, the spinner flasks are transferred onto the laminar flow bench, but before removing the spinner flask from the incubator, all lids are closed. Then every spinner flask is handled in the same way. The central lid with the impeller is opened and placed upside down at the back of the bench. The flask is shaken vigorously with one hand and simultaneously a 5 ml sample is taken with a 25 ml sterile pipette. The homogeneous mixing is crucial to ensure reliable sampling. A partial medium exchange is realized to prevent nutrient limitation. Again, the spinner flasks are transferred onto the bench. Now you have to wait until all the microcarriers have settled down to the bottom of the spinner flask. The lid can then be removed. And 50% of the working volume is replaced with fresh preheated culture medium. Afterwards, the flasks are closed, moved to the incubator and cell expansion is continued. With increasing cultivation time, microcarrier cell aggregates become larger and reach diameters between 2 and 3 millimeters at the end of cultivation, which was defined to be day 6. At day 6, the cell density is around 1 million cells per milliliter while the cell viability is around 98%. This is the point for cell harvest which is explained in video number 4. As explained in video number 5, the harvested cells are subjects of quality control. Successful spinner expansions of MSCs entail pre-investigations in which the optimum microcarrier medium combination and main cultivation parameters such as concentration of microcarriers and cells have to be defined. When it is operated at the NS1U criterion, cell densities up to 1 million cells per milliliter are achievable in serum-supported fed batch cultivations within 6 days. 
The NS1U criterion is the lower limit of the NS1 criterion that was defined by Tweetering in the 50s and represents the just suspended impeller. For more detailed information, please watch video number 2. A 60% medium exchange between cultivation day 3 and 4 is common in the majority of expansions of HMSCs today. Click replay to watch this video again or follow the links to the other videos.